It's that time again. I'm John Zadar. This is Wednesday, February 2nd, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where I go browsing around the OTC market, looking at penny stocks and such, looking for stocks that have got something going for them. And I found one today. This one could be a unicorn, folks. It is very possible. This company is in a very hot sector that's only getting bigger, but they're working outside of the country where it's even hotter than it is here. And I'm excited to share this with you. So come along and let me show you what I got. I know, I know. Once again, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Seriously, folks, I don't start my due diligence on an OTC stock on any other website. This is the only one I found on the entire internet that is updated daily by the SEC and FINRA. Why waste my time looking for information when I know where it's at? A little silly, right? All right, we are looking at Just Kitchens. This is ticker JKHCF. And just so you know, that F on the end, that represents it being a foreign company. This company is out of Canada. However, Just Kitchens is operating over in Asia and doing a bang up job over there. They finished the day at just over 84 cents and just over 3% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC. That's the QB, the better tier. That's better because you have to audit your financials to get there. Audited financials mean you're more transparent. That means you're more trustworthy. They've also got a verified profile and a transfer agent. Looks great. They've got independent directors. Now they needed those when they uplisted to the QB and when they plan to uplist to the NASDAQ. Everybody plans to uplist to the NASDAQ. They're going to need them too. So what does this company do? Well, they've got two divisions. You've got Just Kitchen and Just Market and both deliver food, groceries or meals, you know, hot meals, but they are not delivery companies. No, they're not. They are not like Grubhub, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. They do just deliver. This company actually hires out the delivery to third-party companies. So what is it that they actually do do? They run ghost kitchens. You're going, what the heck is a ghost kitchen? Well, in a nutshell, I'm going to go more into this, but in a nutshell, it's a restaurant that only serves food for delivery. And if you're only cooking for deliveries, do you really need the rest of the restaurant? You just need the kitchen. Ta-da! So that's what they do. And they work for other restaurants who don't have deliveries, who don't have online presence. They work for those companies. The company is currently operating in Taiwan and Hong Kong, and they plan to extend here to the United States and other Asian countries. And I know they're already moving into other Asian countries. Now, the company's got a very unique style of business. They call it the hub and spoke operating model. As a matter of fact, let me show you. Now, Ghost Kitchens isn't a new concept. It just wasn't very popular, not until COVID. When everybody got locked down and all the restaurants got shut down, there were no people coming in, but these restaurants needed to make money. So they didn't have to have waiters. They didn't have to have tables. They didn't have to have a register. They just needed a kitchen. Now you had restaurants say like McDonald's, they used their kitchens and utilized their drive up service. Then you had other restaurants like Little Caesars, which already had delivery in place for their pizzas. But most restaurants did not. And they weren't set up online either. They had no presence. And that's where this company comes in. Now, lots of companies tried to do this and they would set up a ghost kitchen. They'd get some contracts with some restaurants and they would have their delivery circle. Well, they could only do so much work in that kitchen and they could only deliver so far out. So it really wasn't a thriving business until they came up with the hub and spoke. Now this is very unique. This company has the hub, which does all the main preparation of the meals. Then they flash freeze them. And the next morning they send them out to these cloud kitchens, these satellite kitchens, if you will, that are in densely populated areas further out and away. These kitchens are much smaller and they'll just finish the meals. They'll get them all warmed up. They'll put the finished touches on them. They'll package them. And then the delivery companies will come and take them away. But this is what's so special. This hub is not one kitchen. No, they're getting buildings that have numerous kitchens in them, 20, 30 kitchens. And that's all they are. It's kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. And they'll have their Chinese food, their 
Mexican food, their European food, all being prepared there in that one spot. Now, when we take a look at the relative volume, it's nothing to brag about. It's a little bleak, actually. Now, I can tell you that there was no news today. There was a quarterly report put out yesterday, and it was even put out as a news press, which is what caught my attention. I read through it, and it was good. It was very good. They have made some huge leaps and bounds in the last year, enough to make me think, wow, this could be a unicorn. A unicorn is a stock that goes up 10 times, a 10-bagger, and I think this company has it. But in saying that, it doesn't look like it when you look at the relative volume. We normally have 1,500 shares a day being sold, and 2,000 were sold today. Folks, this is the literal definition of a stock under the radar. You're looking at a foreign company, a company out of Canada, operating their business in Asia, selling their stock in the U.S., it just isn't getting any love. It isn't getting any attention. But I don't think that takes away from what they're going to do. So what is their share structure? Not bad. We got 50 million shares in the float, only 75 million outstanding. That is not bad. Unlimited authorized shares, don't buy that. The Canadians don't have to reveal how many shares they have in the bank. Guarantee you they have a limit. So 50 million is our float, which is pretty good. Now I'm not gonna go to the financials here. I got something else. Now I told you I read the quarterly report and that's where this came from. Now this has got some pretty pertinent information. It goes all the way back to March of 2020 and right up till December of last year. Now we can see they started off here. This is when they began their business. They had eight ghost kitchens and they've gotten all the way up to 21. And I know that's outdated. I think they're up to 23 or 27 now. But what's real important is look at that volume of cash that has changed. They went from 127,000 in March of 2020 to 2.2 .2 million in March of 2021. In one year, I mean, that is a huge jump. And now, a year later, they're at $4.4 million. And they've just made some huge deals and got a lot of things going on that are just going to impress you. Now, there's really no reason to look at the disclosures. The only current one is the quarterly filing that just came out, the one I read that caught my attention. Now, speaking of catching your attention, they've got some great news here. I mean, lots of it. Everything highlighted in yellow, I think, is important. Some of them are big. I mean, really, I'm surprised the stock is not moving. There are some great pieces of news here. What I've done is I've basically grabbed a paragraph from each one of these, and I've put them aside so we can look at them all at once. Pretty quick and easy. But there is one here I want to take a look at. This is important to me. I think this is a big jump for them. Uh, this came out October 18th of last year. Just Kitchen launches proprietary software, JKOS. They tell us here that the company is pleased to announce that it has launched the Just Kitchen operating system. That's JKOS, which is a software that integrates with third-party devices and applications to add the food ordering capability. The software enables Just Kitchen to offer its expanding portfolio of brands and menus to the growing number of customers who are interacting with smart technologies that are different than mobile phones and computers, such as televisions and fashion accessories, for example. You're thinking fashion accessories. Yeah, a watch. You know, smart watches now. Now, they also go on to tell us a second piece of news, which I think is outstanding. This one is, additionally, the company has signed an agreement and completed the initial testing of JKOS integration with the Heiko Mini device, which is a set-top television box that is popular in Asia and functions on the Android TV operating system. Users of the Heiko Mini will soon be able to place food orders while watching television. I think it's already happened. This is old news. You can do this. Um, over 20,000 Heiko Mini units have been sold to date, with over 64% owners being active daily. Well, of course, it's TV. <laughs> of course. Over half of the world's 1.1 billion televisions will be smart enabled by 2026, while Rethink predicts that Android TVs will have 25% of the smart TV market. 
And that is going to be approximately 236 million of the 905 million devices out there. The company is currently working with various operators of convenience stores, shopping malls, and department stores to create virtual food halls and integrate them through JKOS into their businesses and enhance their customers' experiences. Folks, imagine now it's on your remote control. You can just bring up the TV guide. And you know what? Look at these menus. These are the sort of menus that come up all different types of food so you can order on TV while you're watching TV and get Mexican food, get steaks, get ribs, get pancakes. I mean, this is definitely the best advertising you're going to get. It's instant. Now let's go take a look at the other news bullet style, if you will. So what I've got here is just the headlines, the date, and the paragraph that you need to know. And they've got some excellent news here. And we can fly right through this pretty quickly. November 15th, Just Kitchen announces Philippines expansion through a joint venture with TDG Ventures. So they're in the Philippines now. January 4th, Just Kitchen signs letter agreement to purchase 46,000 square foot mega spoke facility. Holy cow. They have purchased 100% of this. The mega spoke will enable Just Kitchen to prepare food items for up to 40 different menus. They have uh, the capacity of eight ghost kitchens located in the one facility and they can handle basically all the business of Taiwan from this one hub. Unbelievable. The Megaspoke also has a complete transportation management system for a fleet of 10 owned delivery trucks that Just Kitchen is going to use for their own internal logistics between the hubs and the spokes. And they say this is going to be a game changer. I would think so. January 4th. Just Kitchen acquires We Chef Specialized Kitchen. We Chef is primarily a 2,900 square foot commercial kitchen facility centrally located in the highly dense district of Tapai, one of the highest delivery trade zones in Taiwan. We Chef Kitchen is subdivided into six fully functioning kitchens that can deal with all the cuisine types. January 5th. The company announces the opening of their second Hong Kong location and Sang Chong Ghost Kitchen in Taiwan. So they got more of these opening. They got 23 now it says, 23. On January 22nd, Just Kitchen launched a food truck featuring DJ Khalid's Another Wing brand on a pop-up basis in the Exai district of Tapai City. The food truck will be stationed in a central location in the nightclub district. Good business there on a nightly basis and will be open during peak hours. Additionally, on February 10th, 2022, Just Kitchen has scheduled the opening of two additional Ghost Kitchen locations. I guess that takes our 23 up to 25. February 3rd, Just Kitchen signs agreement with Global Dark Kitchen Operator for up to 20 APAC locations. 20, I don't know what that's taking it up to. Uh, they are getting 20 of the licensor's existing locations in the Asia Pacific and expects its first six licensees to be exercised for the locations in Singapore, another country. The licensor is a Los Angeles based company that has become the world's largest licensor of dark kitchens. What else we got going on here? I think we got two more big pieces of news. I'm not kidding. We got this one. This is on February 8th. Just Kitchen becomes exclusive fresh meal partner with Uber Eats Smart in Taiwan. Now they're affiliating themselves with big names. The company recently entered into a commercial arrangement to be the exclusive fresh meal provider to Uber Eats Mart in Taiwan. Uber Mart currently has five delivery only locations, otherwise known as dark stores, that can be reached by 90% of over the 6.5 million people in the combined cities of this area. Uber Eats, the parent company of Uber Mart, is among the world's largest and fastest growing food delivery services. In addition, this is cool, the company is also excited that Just Kitchen will get a new and different kind of exposure for its delivery only food on reality TV. All Star Sports Day is a reality show that is currently entering its third season on which local celebrities compete in athletic competitions. It's one of the highest rated shows in Taiwan with up to 
well, almost a half a million viewers per episode. At the midpoint of this season, a live episode will be broadcast from the Taipei Arena that will include a three-minute video advertisement by the company. That's going to get a lot of attention, half a million people watching it. February 22nd, you ready for this one? Just Kitchen to create fresh meals for 7-Eleven convenience stores in Taiwan. Didn't know they had them there, did you? More 7-Elevens than any other store. Just Kitchen has entered into a commercial arrangement with President Chain Store Corporation that manages and operates all 7-Eleven convenience stores in Taiwan. Just Kitchen will work to create fresh meal collaborations with 7-Eleven Taiwan. The company will also be adding Foodomo, a food delivery business acquired by 7-Eleven Taiwan in 2021 to its roster of third-party service providers. Taiwan has more than 10,000 convenience stores. That's one store for every 2,000 people. The highest density in the world. And 7-Eleven makes up more than half of those stores with at least 5,647 of them. The Taiwanese customers overwhelmingly choose convenience stores by a whopping 84%. All right, I had to go get a drink. That's a lot of news, isn't it? So this came out February 28th. Just Kitchen signs brand swap agreement with largest ghost kitchen operator in Japan. This is the very last piece of news, and they're finishing off with a cherry. I mean, the largest operator in Japan. They just got done dealing with Uber, which is the largest delivery company in the world. They were dealing with that Dark Kitchens supplier out of Los Angeles, which is the largest. Man, when you surround yourself with those sort of friends, how can you fail? The company has entered into an agreement to exchange the virtual branding rights to certain delivery-only food brands with TGAL Inc., which was established in Tokyo in 2013. TGAL is the largest ghost kitchen operator and number one distributor of food brands in Japan. TGAL has access to over 100 brands, while Just Kitchen's current portfolio is comprised of approximately 30 proprietary menus. I thought we read 40. Hmm. By the way of the brand swap agreement, the company will gain access to the large on-demand food market in Japan, which is aligned with its previously announced international expansion plan to grow beyond Taiwan. Well, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, is that all part of Taiwan? I didn't think so. So you've got all their bullets here, the main things that were covered, and I even covered a little bit more. But as I said, when you've got friends that have that much clout, they're doing that much business, they're that big, when you've got a business model that is growing that fast, when your income is exploding, folks, what's going to happen? Sooner or later, things are going to get right, and this stock is going to take off. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of bargain price we can get right now. So we're over here at Think or Swim, a free trading platform. Just mosey on over to TD Ameritrade, get yourself a free account, keep your account open, and you can use TOS just like I do. This is JKHCF on a six month, four hour chart. Keeping in mind, she doesn't get a lot of volume, at least for the last 30 days. We know she was between one and 2,000 shares. Back here, Let's see what one of these volume bumps are. That's 35,000 shares. Uh, these average, I see these average tall bumps, they're about 25,000, 18,000. So she has been under the radar. She has not had a lot of volume yet. Just hasn't been a lot of attention. Hopefully this video does it. Seriously, there hasn't been a lot of attention. We don't have a 200 day, that's why I felt naked here. There's no 200 day SMA on the board. The best we got going is our 50. And she is trying to fight it. She's come hit way back here and then just here recently, she really got above it, came under it, chopped it again and has now fallen. And she's down here. Let's see. Let's put a line there. See where that gets us. All right. She had a low here. I mean, real low. But I don't think she's going to get that low again. That's fifty cents. There ain't no telling, though. There's no telling. She was at a dollar eighty-seven here. We're still under the signal line on the MACD, and the RSI does get a little radical. We, we had a good bounce there on that day. Let's come in on the twenty-day, one hour. Ooh, see, <laughs> we're not getting a lot of bars. So we had a high here of a dollar 20 days ago, 
hit 77 cents there and we're at 84 cents now just below the 200 day or no it's not it's a 50 day SMA oh, I missed my 200 so we did get above we did get above the signal line here and we've had a negative crossover right there the blue has come down underneath that orange yellow line bad move we need a reversal like on a wrestling mat <coughs> get up there on the top so right now she hit that low bubble and I don't know if she's bouncing off that low or not all I know is that she is very low I want to take a gander just a gander at a one-year chart all right so we are at a low area here if you get away from the absolute low bubble you can see that right in this region right here that that's about her lowest over a year how can this not be a good buy-in time now I'm not saying buy everything at once you never buy everything at once unless you know it's going up immediately <laughs> and that's still a gamble right so you buy some of what you want know how much you want buy 20 25 percent watch and see if it does go down further grab yourself some more at a better price happy it went down now aren't you if it starts going up well no by reading your technicals if our MACD gets up above that signal line and starts looking like a wave if this gets up above this line here and starts burning you know it's climbing you better get in the boat before it leaves without you but it's your money do more DD you know I didn't cover it all you saw how much news was there and there was a lot of extra stuff in each one of those pieces of news so it wouldn't hurt you at all but remember folks this company is under the radar under its 50 and virtually virtually at a low forget that low bubble it's a freak you might you might get it down here to 74 cents you might save yourself a dime if you want to wait and see but I'm telling you what something's gonna happen they just came out with the quarterly report so it's gonna be another three months before a quarterly report comes out and I'll tell you what if it does what I think it's gonna do if it's gonna put them into the green and show six seven million dollars in a quarter that is going to be tremendous under the radar dark horse dark unicorn honestly folks I don't think this company can fail I don't know what it's gonna to take to make the stock price pop honestly they've got deals with some very big organizations all that news we read that just came out here in January and February all those big deals that big mega 46,000 square foot place the deal with uber the deal with 7-eleven that all is just starting folks this is going to get huge and when it catches up the stock price is going to shoot think of what uber does think of what any of those other companies are doing and all they do is deliver food this company is delivering the food after they make it in ghost kitchens and they're doing this for lots of name brand companies with lots of different styles of food and now they've got the supermarket as well we didn't even touch on to that but that's kind of common sense right folks I left a lot of DD there for you to do the quarterly report just came out read the news press it makes it easier than the quarterly report there is lots of information in the news Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.